Hi YouTube, this is I Want a Turtle and welcome to my first Magic the Gathering opening. Today we're going to be opening a Dominaria bundle. Um, and what comes inside is 10 boosters, nice. A pretty cool box, D20, take a sure. Uh, player's Guide, not really useful, 80 lands, yeah, whatever. Uh, so let's get into this thing. Um, yeah, so the reason I got this was because of the sale that GameStop has right now where uh, basically trading cards, everything is buy one, get one free, which is pretty awesome. Um, definitely bundles isn't something that I would normally buy uh, where I would primarily opt for a booster box, but given the sale, it was definitely worth it. Uh, so it's like 45 for basically 20 packs, which uh, is pretty good, but the loose packs are a little bit better. Um, although getting, uh, getting up, like, well, got four of these bundles, um, for the, the extras isn't bad. Uh, I'm not, this box kind of confuses me. I'm not sure exactly what it's for, but it could be useful. So, um, and, sorry, let's see what we got. There's our D20. Cool. Got our... 10 booster packs and a whole lot of land that we don't really need. Uh, I find this thing pretty cool. Should be useful. And yeah, whatever. Alright, so let's get into this. Alright, so as far as myself and Magic the Gathering go, um, Magic was introduced to me by my college roommate. And uh, it took me a little bit to pick up the mechanics, but once I did, uh, I really fell in love with it. Um, comparing it to other TCGs I played, which uh, I didn't really play a whole lot of Pokemon, uh, but did play a good amount of Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, Magic is obviously much more complex, um, and the mechanics make the game much more interesting. And alright, first pack. Let's just go through these commons. Alright. Untamed Kavu, Seal Away, Sulfur Falls, alright, so one of the dual lands uh, that can come into play untapped if you have the right card. Uh, okay. Some organization real quick. Yeah, so I got into it um, around the time when I think the cards that were in rotation were like uh, Scars of Mirrodin and then Phyrexia was probably like the first set that I was uh, pretty engaged with uh, starting to accumulate cards and just playing casually. I never really played like at a Friday Night Magic or anything, just casual play. And um, yeah, I was getting really into it but I was in college so I didn't have a whole lot of money and when I really understood what it meant for my cards to be rotated out. Josu Vesh Lich Knight. Um, I realized how expensive uh, it, it is to play Magic and kind of stopped at that point. And primarily all I would do, I, I again I was really, really did enjoy the game though, so I would uh, watch uh, some competitive play online. Um, and so, given that I was collecting the cards that were in the standard format, I was uh, watching uh, like SCG Live or Star City Games. I would watch those uh, competitions. Ooh, Trainer's Torment. Juggernaut. And other creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Sounds pretty good. Yes, yeah, so I would watch some competitive play, and however, I'd probably uh, watch a tournament like every couple of months or so. Uh, so eventually, standard kind of got too there's too much churn to really keep up with with uh, the amount of time that I was able to uh, spend watching that. And then that's when I started watching Legacy. And then the nice thing about Legacy was that the format doesn't change a whole lot. The 
the band list doesn't change that often. Um, and the archetypes were much easier to follow. And so uh, that's primarily what I watch right now. Um, modern, uh, it seems to be like the uh, more popular than Legacy, but it's a little, there seems like there's a lot more of the cards to learn. So Champion of the Flame, plus two plus two for each aura, okay. Sage of Latinam, Goblin Barrage, Kazuro Sengir Pure Blood. Uh, this reminds me of uh, the roommate that introduced me to magic. I uh, would play a vampire deck, and the card that was always the bane of my existence was Vampire Nighthawk. It was a 2 3 fire life blink. I think for 3. And yeah, I could never, never have the card to deal with flying creatures and would lose any race simply because of the lifelink mechanic. Alright, fight with fire, Knight of Malice, Lord of the Weatherlight, and Tishar and Sister So, yeah, definitely recently started getting back into it. Um, I wouldn't say I'm a big collector right now. Still, I still don't play, but uh, I still try to follow the scene. Alright, Urge's Tome, Merfolk Trickster, Sorcerer's Wand, Joda Archmage Eternal. Uh, yeah, if you haven't heard about that, uh, took advantage of the deal like Uh that's quite good. Uh, for for it to be better than the uh, cost ratio compared to a booster box, uh, I have to imagine that's pretty rare. Like the Black Friday deal, oh, there's a foil on this one. Uh, the Black Friday deal was, I think it was buy one get one 75% off, which I didn't take advantage of, which right now I don't mind. Uh, Spore Crown Ballad, and the hollow is Guardians of Colors. Then, ooh, there we go, Lyra Dawnbringer. This was one of the pretty good hits. Flying First Strike and Lifelink. Other angels you get, plus one, plus one. Five for five for five. Five, five for five. Okay, okay so we got one Mythic. Uh, that's pretty good for ten packs. So, deep freeze, and let's go through. Okay, uh, Sarah's Angel, or Sarah Angel. Flame of the Cow. This, this new uh, saga thing is very interesting. And. Whisper. There we go. Oh, go. Small Fluid Bow. So far, likely our best hits would be that Sulphur Falls, Dual Land, and then the Ladder Down there. Alright, so last pack. Kind of hollow again. And start here. Song of Freelise. Sorcerer's Wand. And yes, another. Dual land. Whoa, with a foil rare. The mending of Dominaria. So Swamp Forest. And then a rare saga foil. Mending of Dominaria. Very cool. Alright, there you have it guys. Uh, thanks for tuning into my first opening. Um, Want to support this new channel? Definitely like, subscribe. And yeah, and I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks, bye.